Hi guys, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, welcome back. We're going to do a really basic introduction video for you here, and then we're going to get more into um, some geotechnical engineering and uh, some uh, mecha soil mechanics uh, as we delve deeper. But first, what we need to do is we need to start from the very beginning. Okay, so this is going to be a really short video. It may be really simple to you, but if you've never seen this stuff, this might all be completely new. So, you know, bear with us. If this isn't the video for you, move along and... Um, you know, maybe we'll get into some derivations of these formulas in a future video, maybe not. Comment down below if you want to see some of the derivations. Um, but we're just going to go over the very, very basic formulas and explain what they are with this. So um, let's go ahead and get started. We have a couple diagrams here, okay? And on the left, this is a soil. Okay, so this is a soil on the left. Okay, and as we know, soil is made up of three different parts. Uh, we have a, a, a soil component, so a, a solid component. Okay, we have a moisture component, so there's some degree of moisture in it, or it may be completely dry, but generally there's some water inside. There's also some voids, okay, so there's, uh, there's, there's little pockets inside of the soil that don't have anything in them. They just have air, okay, so, and um, there's, uh, you know, different combinations of these three can, uh, you know, lead to different values and different calculations that we're going to show down below. So if we break down this so uh, soil sample here into its constituent parts so air water and, and solids we get what's called a phase diagram okay and this is where we can start to derive uh, some weight volume relationships which are going to help us uh, you know solve some important properties of soil that are going to be required to solve some of the problems that we're going to do in these videos so as you can see here um, the soil is made up of three volumes so we have the volume of the air that's in the soil the volume of the water, and we have the volume of the solids, okay? And uh, just a quick note is that the volume of the air plus the volume of the water is equal to the volume of the voids, okay? Because as, uh, you know, if you if you think about it, the the water inside of the soil needs somewhere to go, okay? And where is that water, What where is that water occupying within the soil? Well, it's not occupying the solid area, it's occupying the voids, okay? And when all of the voids, are filled up with water so that this uh, is all water here that means that we have a soil that's fully saturated okay so it's a hundred percent moisture content so if we take a look at the weight okay as we know from uh, you know from basic physics and, and other courses the weight is simply the mass multiplied by gamma water or 9.81 which is essentially the value for gravity and as you'll see here you see the wa the the weight of air is equal to zero okay because air weighs practically nothing so in soils Okay, we always consider the weight of the air to be negligible. Okay, and then we have the weight of the water and the weight of the solids. And if we come down here, okay, right on the left here, we have a couple of relationships. So we have the sum of all of these, the, air, the volume of the air plus the volume of the water plus the volume of the solids is equal to the total volume. The weight of the water and weight of solids are equal to total weight. Okay, and these are important relationships because a lot of the times you're going to need to solve for one of these, one of these in order to continue. So those are two really important, I know that seems basic, but very important concepts to, to understand. So now we're going to move down here, and I'm going to go over just a couple really basic formulas for you. Let's start with the void ratio. Okay, so the void ratio, you'll see this come up a lot in soils. Uh, the void ratio is simply the, the ratio of the volume of the voids to the volume of soil solids in a given mass or in a given soil mass, okay? So what that looks like, okay, is the volume of the void. So we have the volume of the air plus the volume of the, the water divided by the volume of the solids, okay? So we have, that's gonna be denoted by E, okay? And you'll, you'll see this a lot, okay? It's going to be uh, the volume of air plus the volume of water divided by the volume of solids, okay? Which is simply equal to VV, volume of voids, divided by volume of solids. Okay. So that's the, the formula for void ratio, okay? And um, if, you, if you remember just to draw this and remember these, um, draw your phase diagram during the test and you can take a look at this and remember these little relationships here, it's gonna help you out. Okay, so there we go. And now let's take a look at the porosity. What is the, what is the porosity in a soil sample? Well, porosity, which we're gonna always be usually denoting by N, okay, is the ratio of the volume of the voids to the volume of the soil specimen, okay? So that's, uh, it's a little bit different than the void ratio, okay? We have the volume of the voids, which as we explained before is air and uh, water, okay? So we have volume of voids divided by the total volume now, okay? So we're going to denote that by big V, okay? Perfect. 
And there's actually a little uh, derivation that we can do here, because n okay, is equal to volume of the voids divided by v. Okay? And that is also equal to, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this is also an important formula to understand. There is a derivation. We'll probably do it in another um, question. But for now, just remember that, that that is the porosity. OK, cool. Let's move on. We have the degree of saturation, s. That's always going to be denoted by s. OK, this is a, a percentage value. And it's a percentage of the weight. And what it is, it's a, it's a ratio of the volume of the water in the void spaces to the volume of voids, OK? So as we explained before, the, vo the water uh, within the soil occupies voids, OK? Because you know that's where the water goes. And then as soon as all the voids are occupied by water, then there, that becomes a fully saturated soil sample. So the degree of saturation is measuring how many of those air voids are occupied by water and not by air. So how we're going to calculate that, it's very simple, actually. We have the volume of the water, so the volume of the total water in the sample, divided by the volume of the voids, right? So we have volume of water divided by this whole thing, and that is going to give us the ratio of how much water is in all of the void spaces within the sample, okay? And moving along, and also, by the way, if you want to get that into a percentage, we're just going to multiply that by 100. Okay, now, um, an important part, actually, to note, and like I explained before, okay, so if soil is saturated, okay, the saturation, uh, degree of saturation is 100%. That's also important to know there, okay? Um, so maybe the question will say that, you know, you have a saturated soil. So then you're going to know right away that S is equal to 100%. All right, let's take a look at moisture content, okay? So moisture content is a little bit different, okay? Moisture content is simply the weight. Now, this is kind of a, a ratio of weights now, whereas degree of saturation was a, a ratio of volumes, okay? So this is a, now a weight relationship, and moisture content is simply, we're going to call that W, okay? That's going to be a percentage, and we're going to say that that is going, the weight of water divided by weight of solids, okay? And that's going to be times 100, okay? And that is... So we have the weight of water divided by the weight of the solids, okay? That's going to give us our moisture content. And let's take a look at our moist unit weight, okay? So remember what the, the units are actually for unit weight because that's important because I know unit weight is a little bit tricky for some people. Okay, unit weight is essentially um, we have a, a unit of kilonewton, okay, per meter cubed. I mean, it could also be newton per meter cubed, but generally we have uh, kilonewton per meter cubed for uh, unit weight. And we simply uh, find the moist unit weight, okay, by multiplying or by calculating the weight of the total specimen over the volume, okay. So that is going to include everything, okay. So the weight is going to have the solid uh, and the water within that density, okay. So, and of course we don't include. So we have water plus solid over volume total volume, and we disclude the air because air is considered to be negligible. Now, the dry unit weight is a little bit different. The dry unit weight is going to be, because we don't want to include the water, okay, we're going to have the weight of the solids divided by the total volume, okay? So that's the difference between dry unit weight and moist unit weight. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, that's some really basic stuff on, you know, an introduction on um, phase diagrams and what these things are, void ratio, porosity, degree of saturation, et cetera, because the, you'll see these coming up all the time. And really, in order to do well in this course, you're going to need to understand these, okay? And maybe we'll do another video where we derive some of these, but the next video will definitely be solving some questions using these formulas. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, like and subscribe.